Hey everybody, Randy here in the Eastwood Garage. Thanks for joining us for another live video on Facebook, YouTube, and at eastwood.com. Don't forget to uh, follow us on Facebook and like us and um, subscribe to us on YouTube so you're notified of all of our live videos. Today we're talking about brakes. So we've got Andy here, uh, product manager for this category, and he's gonna show you how to use them. We've got our VersaBend brake and three box and pan brakes behind us, a 12, a 48, and a 24. We're gonna put some of these to use. If you have any questions, make sure you post it. Scotty C, unfortunately, is not here today, so I'll be taking the questions, so I'm gonna run over to the computer. Um, but right now, I guess I'm gonna turn it over to Andy, so. All right, so one quick project that we started um, last week was we've got Cody's Camaro back here, you guys can see. If we get up close to this Camaro, there's rot all down the rockers. In the center, there's actually a good amount of material there. We wouldn't be replacing them, but you can see here, there's basically stick our finger through it, also up here on the bottom and on the top. When you start to see these spots, more than likely there's more behind it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a piece that created all the way up here down to the underneath, and that way you get all the pieces um, that are they could have rot and get the strength back in the panel. So real quick, what we're gonna do is gonna come over here. What I would suggest, if you're a first timer when it comes to <laughs> using these, a lot of us are, is you grab a small piece of sheet metal and you start maybe one inch wide. Mm -hmm. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna start making your bends and you can keep on going back to the, the, the vehicle over and over again and tweak. Get a little bit, five more degrees, 10 more degrees here, or I kind of messed up, and what I can do is... Make sure you're bending it the right direction. Yeah, make sure you're bending the right direction. I can bend it back. You can see it got a little bit of a crease there, but... It's just a template. Yeah, just as a template, you can push it back to where you were before. You go through the whole the motions, and you're going to find out that when you put a piece in, you're going to bend it one way. The next piece, you might have to turn it upside yeah. down. So you might not be able to fit it, actually, in one of these breaks, unless you go through some trial runs and find out that, okay, the proper I need order. to start here and then I need to go here, then I need to yep. slide over there. So, and like you said, we found out the order because uh, if you have one of our VersaBend brakes, we now have this, uh, it's the, the forming brake option for it. And it's simple, but it allows you to make some shapes you'd otherwise wouldn't be able to make, like say this channel, right here if I let Joe get in on it. So you'll be able to make that channel, which comes in really handy when you're gonna build a rocker panel like Andy's making right here, where all of a sudden that comes in into play. If you can see so, on, on the actual unit itself, technically if you were gonna go back and do that 180 degree re mm -hmm. return, you could only do it with the minimum of this width. Yeah. That's why that piece comes into play. Because it's only- It's only about a half inch wide. And the same also is if you see the edge here, right now, if you ever wanted to put a piece in and you wanted to turn it around, or you had a 90 already it in it. It has to be at least. It has to be this full width right here. That's why with this, you can actually remove this fence right here, and now you have that half inch again. And you'll be able to make half inch joggle bends like this right here, like maybe like a side of a truck bed. Which so we will be able show, to do you. That and we'll show you. Which you can also do with our box and pan brakes yep. as well. We will show but you if that. If you're looking for the, you know, the lower, the, the Versa Bend brake, yep. you can do a lot with it. Well, I'll turn it over to you, let you start making that. I'm going to answer a couple questions here, see what we have. So we had this template that we already started with. If you actually see the, the piece I made already, I put a number one, this is the first one that we're going to make, number two, swap over the other side, number three, four, and then five. Basically what happens is you put it in the first time, you went to go make the second bend and realize that it doesn't actually fit. So you need to do it in a sequence. So you really have to take your time and think about which way you want to do it and then mark. Um, the best way to do it, in my eyes, is to mark your first one, mark your edges. You don't need to, to draw a line all the way across, so you don't need a straight edge. What you need to do is you need to measure and place that little mark on the very edge, on each side, that way you're straight. And also, put it on the outside of your piece of material. If you can actually see, there's, you mark it on both sides, because sometimes you have to actually flip the material over to make that bend. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start over here on the Versa Bend. We have got our template, and uh, we're gonna make our first bend. So I've already marked out number one. On, we'll just go across on both sides. As you can see, it's marked on both sides. What makes it nice and easy for this, it is a budget-minded 
unit, and you just have handles real quick. You don't have to use a wrench. Um, something that, if Joe, we could bring you in real quick to show you, you can actually change the radius of a bend. It doesn't need to be perfectly sharp. If you can see, I'm lining up the edge here on both sides, and I can actually move back and forth. So when you look at the Camaro, it doesn't have very, very sharp bends. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to move this all the way back, make sure we're lined up, tighten these pieces down, and when you actually make this bend, you can see that it actually has a bit of a radius now because you're not directly on the edge. If you wanted a, a very tight bend, what you would do is you'd move this back so it would be the width of the material itself with a little bit of a gap. Um, but this, we wanted a nice slow bend, so we moved it all the way back. And what I'm going to do, this is our first bend, bring it up, get an idea of what this is going to be. We're pretty close. We need to bend a little bit further. A little bit more. And another trick I've seen people do is uh, you bend, right? if you're making 90s especially, bend one piece of metal, put it in there, and bend another one. So you've got that one that's already in there as, a, as kind of like a buffer. It makes so it this a is a rounder. nice quick release. And you can slide it right out. So we have our first piece, as you can see right there, we've got the, the correct bend. And now for number two, as we talked about before, we actually need to go over this side. And the interest of time, what we're going to do is we're going to walk over to the 24 inch and we're actually going to, to bend it up. What we would do if you owned the Versa Bend is you would undo these two bolts right here and that would give you that room to be able to make your, your uh, 90 right here. So in the interest of time, we'll go over here. We're going to set this up really quickly. If you've never used a pan and finger brake, especially ours, all you have to do is just lift this handle and you can set your piece in. So. We're just going to watch our edges here and just push it down slightly. We're going to grab that test piece and when we look at this, it's directly 90 degrees. So what we're going to do, we're just going to grab and just watch the side. We're not quite at 90, so we're going to go a little bit further. We're about there. Yep. All right, so now we have that second piece. So we did this first one, wasn't quite high enough for the rocker. So we actually added a little bit of height there and we have our 90. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back over to the Versa Ben and we're gonna show you what the, uh, the brake option actually does. So we're gonna put the forming. Yep. Which is really simple. Yeah, absolutely. Take this out and put that one in. So we've got, Drop the threads in. There We're going to grab our piece. We're actually going to load it in from the back. So this is why you're going to be doing test pieces. People that haven't done this before, in most <laughs> cases, you won't even think to load it from the back. But in this case, we have to. We have mm -hmm. to do a full 180 degree. So we're just going to tighten these down by finger, and then we're going to use a Ratchet really quick. We just need these things to be slightly snug. They don't need, you don't need to really, really pull on them. Um, just the design is going to keep it in place. And again, um, if you have any questions, post them. Scotty C is not here. So unfortunately, I don't know if, was, if we're going to lose, lose some of his fans today. But he'll be back tomorrow. He will be back. All right, so all we did there was just go right up and did our 90, which brings us to a full 180. And in order to quick pull this thing out, all we need to do is just loosen it up and we can swing the material out and drop it out. Nice and easy. So now we made our full 180, which is gonna fit right there in the, uh, the jam of the door. Next piece we already have marked down here is number four. Um, for this one, we're going to drop it in this way now. And what we can actually do is we can keep this here. If you wanted to, you could use this as a replacement for that piece. It's not going to flex. It has plenty of height, mm -hmm. plenty of strength. 
nice machined edge. Some people say, I can make that myself. Actually, it's fully machined. It is a straight, like, almost a knife edge. So you're not going to get a perfect form all the way across yeah. if you try to make something like this yourself. The biggest thing about the, um, this little guy over here is you have these quick change pieces. Yeah. That's why you would want to go back. But since we already have it loaded up, we're going to do, we're just going to set it as we would. And if you're just joining us, I'll see if I can sneak this in here. We're building these, we're showing you how to build a rocker panel. This is actually for a first generation Camaro. So it's a bunch of shapes in one. So uh, yeah, if you're just tuning in, we're showing how to do that using our Versa Bend brake. And we're also gonna show you how to use the pan brakes as well. Which, uh -oh. I'm looking at this. I actually think I made a mistake. I did, I loaded it in backwards. <laughs> so we're gonna pull this out. And this is why you have to make test panels. If you made this over and over again, you'd remember, I have to go this way where you're gonna be fine. I'm confused. Yep. But that's not the first time. We're all, <laughs> we're all right there. Yeah, if you if you're doing a production of these, you would know I gotta go this way, this this step, this step, this step. With that one inch piece, that's why yeah. it, was, it was so much easier. And this is another reason right right here where we can pull that front off. If you can see that this piece doesn't exactly fit right now, so it would be up. What we would do is we'd pull it off that fence. So that's what we need to do? Yeah, let's do it now. Show you guys how easy this is. And this is to allow you to make uh, tighter bends, half inch jo joggles. Like, we're gonna. Are you okay, Joe? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's gonna allow you to do. Great it's gonna allow you to do that. That was just two bolts, so pops off really easily. I'm gonna grab our piece real quick. Set it right in. So now you can see we've got all the room in the world when it comes to uh, that piece. So this is a very versatile brake that, uh, that Mark designed handful of years ago. Yeah, and we, and we use it all the time. It can yeah. also, we have it mounted in a vise, but it can also just be mounted directly uh, to, a, to a workbench as yeah, well. Yeah, you can see if right Joe here. Joe backs off or just tilts down a little, you can see there's plates here on each side like just to attach it directly to your workbench. But it's really easy. We just use it in the vise. Yep. So you can throw it underneath the workbench when you're not using it so it's not taking up a bunch of space. We're gonna do, grab this piece. And see, this is actually how it's going to end up. Uh oh. So, the problem <laughs> is, we got to go a full 90. There we go. If anybody's having problems with Facebook locking up, uh, sometimes it happens, people viewing, I have some comments. Just make sure you, uh, you can always go watch it on YouTube or you can watch it at eastwood.com. We'll have a banner up that- So it looks like we need to go a little bit further yeah, on this guy. We'll have a banner on our website. So if you just go to eastwood.com, you can always find and watch the, the videos there as well. What just happened there is since we have this piece here, this, this attachment only lets us go to 90 degrees. Where so the original to to the other one. actually goes further. So this has its place. Yeah. In this situation, um, we can't quite go far enough. Yeah, we can't quite go far enough. So because this actually allows it to bend over ninety. Yes. Slightly. It's and we'll show you the box and pan brakes. They go to what? Do they go to one hundred and thirty-five? Yep. Degrees. Like we said before, this is toolless, so you can very easily uh, plop these on. You don't have to worry about you know, using a wrench. I'm gonna go check for some questions while we're. 
So we're going to grab our piece again. Oh, uh, what, what metal are we using? We're using 20 gauge. Yes. That was the question there. So as you can see, before we can only go so far. Now that the original piece is in, we can go even further. Slide it right out. And we've got the right angle now. So the last piece is going to be these marks here. Slide them right under. And this one again is a not a very tight bend. So what we're going to do is we're going to push this all the way back. We're going to get a nice radius on it. And one quick tip. If you have the fence in the front, make sure you raise these and move them to the back. These are actually spring-loaded, so it's almost like a ratcheting, move them whichever way you want. If you would have these place, placed forward and you brought it up, you would actually stop against it or you could actually fracture one of these. So you don't want to do that. So what we'll do is we'll take our piece and just get a general idea where we're at. Looks like we're pretty good. What we're going to do is we're going to take this over to the Camaro. What we would end up doing is we'd cut off the pieces that we don't need. So right here, there's a little bit more material than what we would have. We would eventually weld this piece in. Well, you always want to have a little bit extra material. You can cut it out later. Um, you can use you know, tin snips, you know, one of our shears. Down here, you'd also have a piece you'd cut out, depending where the rod is. If you wanted to do an outside weld or if you wanted to do a butt weld, use one of our perfect panel prep tools to get a nice strong uh, seam, you could do that. So we'll bring it over and we will take a look to see how we made out. As you can see right now, it's obviously not gonna fit because you know, all the material is still there, but- That's the shape. That's the shape right there that we need. And then we go and we cut out the pieces, um, depending on how much material we needed, which it looks like this is almost exactly the width of what we would end up cutting out. So we'd cut out straight down both sides and it's pretty darn strong right here, so we would actually cut around this location and we could pull the pieces we need out of here. Right in. So, a lot of guys are intimidated by a car that you just bought that has you know, rotted rockers. If I made a test template and then went and did this, I think it's only been about 15 minutes. So now we've got a patch panel for a car that... And, and, and the, might... brake, the brake was cheaper than buying the rocker panels. Yeah, one of the things that people really get worried about is a, a piece like this. The car might be devalued by a couple thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. You buy this tool, you get a couple pieces, you can patch it up in, in a day, maybe yeah. a weekend, a couple hours, and you can get a lot of value back in your car. You can get some structural integrity back in your car, and you can take some pride in doing the work yourself. Yeah, it saved a lot of money. Yep. You can buy more Eastwood tools with that money. Yeah. All right, so I guess next thing, well, we're gonna show how to do this. So we did have one question, um, what will the VersaBend do? It'll do 20 gauge steel, 18 gauge aluminum, the full width up to 20 inches. Mm -hmm. You can do 18 gauge up to a foot wide. Um, we've probably surpassed those standards many, many at times. times. So. Um, and then the uh, panned finger brakes, you're yeah. looking at 18 gauge steel, a thicker aluminum, full width. So that's yeah. end to end, depending on the unit you have. So you've got the 12 inch over here, the 24, that's right on the bench, and then the 48. So if you're doing you know, larger panels, 48's yeah. the way to go. You can mount it to a bench. Um, if you really wanted to, it's, it's a big unit. It does weigh a good amount, yeah. but you I know, we move it all around. <laughs> yeah, you simply just can't do some things on these smaller units than you can on yeah. that. I was, using it to make I was actually using it to make rocker panels because yeah. they had to be 30 some inches long. And when it comes down to the guy who has a small shop, um, you got 20 inches here, yeah. 12 over there. I mean, each one of these units does something that the other one doesn't yeah. do. If you're making, these are obviously just different sizes and different yeah. capacities, but there's budget mine that does a majority of everything you need. The other ones, can you can build boxes, you can build pans that are a little bit and, more difficult. And we're going to get to uh, box and pans here in, a, here in a minute. We want to show you uh, the option. If you're just joining us, this actually has... Uh, this comes like this, and then it's removable to allow you to make tight joggle bends, like if you're doing a 
bed floor or something like that. So I'm going to show you quick. Like Andy said, if you take a strip, like I took a strip here, and um, I made a little template because it's not always easy to remember which way to bend or what angle. So, um, so I did it, and then, and then if it's wrong, you can actually bend it back. And I mark which is the top and which way it goes in because, um, uh, because it does switch. Sometimes you have to flip it over. Mm -hmm. So I'll just do a couple bends here quick just to show you. I got a piece uh, right here. That, and I'll put the marks on this as well. So, and it's really simple. Uh, like Annie said, I'm not going to get carried away here, but just to show you how easy it is. And something else I do when I'm doing this is I'll actually make marks on here so I know how far to bend it up. So there's, you probably won't be able to see it, but if you take a silver marker, you can see them easier. I do them with black. You can see somebody else has marked them. That's why I didn't mark it in silver. So when you pull, you know the spot to go to every time because I'm making them all the same. So then you get your first bend. Then I have it marked, so I flip it around this way, put it in. Eh. I think somebody took acetone on my marks. And then bend back up. And just keep, keep going. I'm not going to do a whole bunch, but just so you get the idea how quick you can actually do this. Now, if you wouldn't have those marks, if you're going all the way across a bed floor, the amount of times you do this, you could end up with <laughs> something that's bowed, and you, would, you know, wouldn't have to do it again. Maybe you would, depending yeah. on um, how far you went. But when it comes down to it, if you have that mark there, you'll end up having this thing flit, flat all the way across, and yeah. um, you don't have to sit there, preload it, do some bends over again. So there, so there it is in, what, a minute or two? And now you just repeat that the whole way um, until you're finished. If you want to do floor pans to add some strength in them. Yeah. It um, adds a lot of strength, just a couple little bends. You can do bead rolls. You can use that. That, that would add even more strength than a bead roll would. Um, and it adds little style lines also, which uh, looks pretty cool. All right. And well, cool. box and pan break. So what we're going to do, we're going to go over here. We Should already we explain have... to somebody wh why Okay, let's, throw it in let's here? bring it over here. We already in do have some not footage that we'll show you here in a minute. But in order for you to... We're not talking down on this unit here, but it does have its limitations. So when you load this piece in, if I wanted to then make a bend, you can see it's the sides I can only hit. go so far to there. Yeah. So even with the other, um, the optional fence for it, you can't go anywhere yeah. technically. So with this, we do have it beveled here so you can go past 90 degrees. But when it comes to making boxes, you can only go 15 degrees maybe. Yeah. And that's where the, uh, the box and pan or box and you know, finger fingers. breaks. Um, and each one play. has a bunch of different varying size yep. fingers. So it'll allow you to, to remove them or switch the order that they're in to, to get the width that you need. Absolutely. So all you got to do is take them out. Yep. So in this case, we're going to look at this off the top of my head. I don't know the width of it. So all you're going to do is you're going to look across here, you know, which one works 12 inch too big. All right. Eight inch looks, looks pretty darn yeah. good. So we're going to remove here, these two fingers, and don't worry about getting all the way to the edges. If there's a little bit there that's hanging over, because of the way these things are designed, it's still going to be able to bend it. There's still going to be that force there. So it, this is the closest we're going to get. We could add the, the one inch to the end of this, but for the video right now, what we'll do is we'll remove these two. And all you're going to need is an Allen. Loosen them up. Well, while he's... Uh Taking these out, moving them around, maybe this is a good time to show some of the stuff uh, we have built. We've got videos on it, if um, Dave can cue it up back in the room. Yeah, this is us. Uh, Matt was building a, a battery tray. You see he rolled some beads in it and then folds it up. And this is him right here actually, you know, removing and adjusting the, the fingers to get the right width. Uh, to get the right width. And then, uh, as uh, Andy was demonstrating earlier, you can see the sides, they go up into... Uh, the box and pan break, which is the advantage of, 
of the box and pan brake is that it allows you, it allows those sides that you've already uh, formed to go up past. What I'm going to do is I'm going to... Don't do that, kids. <laughs> We're going to raise that up a little bit. Put these away. And then we're going to load this piece in. Since we already have a line there, that's the edge of what we are doing before. I want to try to get this as close to the center as possible. All right. Tighten it down. Now we can go up to our 90. What we're going to do is reload it to the other side and do the same thing. simple as that. We now have a box that uh, you can use as a battery tray, um, you know, tool hold down, something like that in your trunk. Really, really easy. All you do is you just drill holes in your, um, your piece and then cut out the uh, extra areas. You want to drill holes because you actually want to leave a little bit of mm -hmm. uh, material open there to, to let it be actual, um, have a bend. If they are right next to each other, it'll deform the actual uh, the box and what's going to happen is you're going to get kind of an oil canning effect where this thing will be it's basically yeah. under tension mm -hmm. so you're going to want to make sure you do that and then you push these in a little bit and you can weld them up weld it together so all right well i guess that's it yeah any so, more questions or um, we, uh, that was it for the questions i think great. i took care of them i think scotty c would be very proud <laughs> So if you do have any uh, questions, you can post them. We'll continue to answer them throughout the day into tomorrow. Don't forget to join us tomorrow. We're uh, going to show you some specialty paints. And on Wednesday, we're going to do, uh, we're going to show you how to weld aluminum with a spool gun. I think we're going to attach it to our MiG-175. So if you're looking to weld aluminum, if you want to get, get the MiG-175, we're going to give you some tips on uh, welding aluminum with a spool gun. So, well, thanks a lot for joining us, Andy. I Appreciate guess it. I'll probably see you next month. Yep. So, and uh, don't forget to visit eastwood.com. Check out uh, our VersaBend brake as well as three pan brake options. Something you guys, oh. real quick. If you guys want us to do videos on something, let yeah. us know in the comments. I'm metal fab and, uh, and welding. Yes. So in a month, if we get an idea in the next week or so. Yeah, because we haven't scheduled, we haven't scheduled his for, uh, for uh, June yet. Yeah. So, so if you guys have ideas, if it's something you want, let us know and we'll schedule. Yeah. Yeah, we'll put we'll it on. We'll let you guys to... know ahead of time that That's it's how coming. the spool gun one, people kept saying when we do a welding one, why don't you yeah, guys do a spool gun? Yeah, it's been a long gun? time. Yeah, so we, we saw finally a lot decided, of spool yeah. guns. So we're trying to help out all the people that, you know, want to learn how to weld aluminum. Yep. So, Sounds all right, good. well, thanks a lot. Appreciate and it. If you have those uh, ideas, roll them in for us. Great, thanks, See guys. You.